Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about our beautiful moon and its effect on planet Earth. But specifically, we're actually going to answer a question of why exactly is it that our moon is slowly moving away from our planet Earth, and what exactly was happening before as well. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So in this simulation you see the moon being completely ripped apart by the tidal forces from our planet Earth and some of the parts are actually crashing under the surface. But uh, not surprisingly, um, a long time ago, specifically about 4.5 billion years ago, the moon was a lot closer to Earth. Well, maybe not this close, but about this close. This is actually uh, quite significantly closer than it is right now. And on top of this, the Earth was actually spinning a lot faster as well. It was actually rotating so fast that a single day on the planet was about six hours long. Well, something happened, and now we know that the moon is a lot farther away. The new location of the moon is at a distance of close to about uh, 400,000 kilometers away. And to see a better perspective, here is the actual location of the moon today. So it basically moved this far away in the last 4.5-ish billion years since its creation. Well, something must have moved it there, and that something is the uh, tidal force from our planet Earth. As a matter of fact, both moon and Earth have tidal interaction with each other, but obviously because Earth is more massive, it causes a lot more effects. But even though I've actually mentioned this several times in previous videos, I never really explained the more specific mechanism behind it. And this mechanism can be actually demonstrated by using a simulation I recently found online that shows you the tidal forces and the um, interaction of those tidal forces based on the location of the moon and also based on the rotation of our planet Earth. So like I mentioned before, Earth used to spin a lot, a lot, a lot faster. And today it spins a lot slower. Moon used to be closer and now it's farther away, so there's actually a connection here. Let me demonstrate this to you using the simulation. So what you're seeing right here is actually the bulge that's created by the moon because it's pulling on Earth. It's, it's pulling um, in such a way that there is a kind of a, a bulge that forms on uh, the side facing the moon and also on the side opposite Earth. And this bulge is the reason why we actually get tides. And uh, it's a lot more powerful on the equator of Earth right here than it is on the sides here. And it's almost imperceivable in the polar regions. So uh, this is where this bulge occurs, right here. And this is actually why the levels of water on Earth used to be much higher on the equator when the Earth was spinning faster. But that's not uh, the entire story. Our Earth also spins, and because of this spin, this bulge actually gets shifted a little bit. As a matter of fact, it's, it gets shifted a little bit to the front of the planet. So instead of facing the moon, it actually kind of precedes it. And we can demonstrate this in the simulation this way. So this is without the rotation, this is as if Earth and Moon were actually currently tidally locked. Or in other words, if the Moon um, basically um, was facing the Earth and Earth was facing the Moon all the time. And this might happen one day, but just not yet. And this is with uh, the rotation of Earth. So because Earth rotates, the actual bulge is a little bit in front, but not this much, of course, because this is a bit of an exaggeration, but a little bit in front. And because this bulge is actually right here and not um, pointing at the center of the moon, there's slightly more um, gravitational attraction coming to the front of the moon. And because of this, moon gets slightly um, accelerated uh, every every second and as a matter of fact um, every single year the moon moves away by about 3.8 centimeters away from earth because its speed actually increases due to this uh, precession of the bulge and likewise uh, since for every action there's an opposite reaction uh, the moon in return slows down the rotation of earth slightly so, in about uh, 4.5 billion more years, our Earth will actually spin uh, much slower. It's going to increase a day on Earth by about 19 hours. So, 
due to the pull from the moon that causes it to accelerate, this also slows down the rotation of our Earth. Now at some point they might actually reach an equilibrium where both Earth and the moon are actually what's known as tidally locked. In other words, we can try to simulate this here by doing the following. Let's see if this works. And there we go. So at this point, um, as the moon rotates around Earth, it's always the same uh, face of Earth that points at the moon. And because of this, uh, we, we call this being tidally locked. And so now there is actually absolutely no tidal interaction between these two objects. They're both kind of stretched a little bit, but, but there's no actual energy exchange between them. And so they actually stay in the same position uh, pretty much forever. And this is actually what happened on Pluto with its biggest satellite known as Charon. They do have this kind of interaction where they are, will probably stay in this position for a very long time. With our Earth and Moon though, it's a little bit different. So the Moon is slightly, slowly drifting away from our planet Earth. This is where it used to be. And, and then in the next uh, few billion years, it's actually going to move farther and farther and farther away until it reaches the location where it is right now at a distance of close to about 400,000 kilometers. Although it's actually closer to approximately 384,000 kilometers. So um, now hopefully you know why the moon is actually moving away from us because basically Due to the rotation of Earth, the tidal bulge is causing the Moon to continuously accelerate. And every single year it moves away from us by about 3.8 centimeters, which is actually very similar to the speed of a growing nail on a human body. So as your nails grow on your fingers, this is how fast the Moon is actually moving away from our planet Earth. And hopefully now you know a little bit more about the Moon and the Earth and how they affect each other. Now in 5 billion years, our Earth will also experience a very very unusual environment where our Sun is actually going to expand quite dramatically and might end up throwing our Moon out of place completely. But that's another story for another day. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye bye. And let's see what happens if the Earth explodes and if any of the fragments actually hit our beautiful moon. Oh wow, that's a little bit more extreme than I imagined. That seems to have destroyed the moon completely.